the module and component. This is the 2023 paper, yeah? So, first we're called to identify X and Y. Looking at the cross section of a diagnosis. This paper, what's X and what's Y? What is X, what is Y? X is the palisade, Mr. Phil. The palisade, yeah. Mr. Phil. Right. And the next one is what? Sponge, Mr. Phil, right? I think that my C C biology students could have done majority of this module one. Yes, they could have. We can look at this easy question. All right, differentiate between the functions of the cells in the in x from y. So differentiate the functions. What are the main functions? What's the main function of the cells of the palisade cells? Main function. Photosynthesis. So for the six marks, you just go to photosynthesis and then move on to the next one, right? That's what I mean. No, no, sir. I can't tell you. Okay. What's the function of the cells, though? They are cuboidal, they are larger, they are packed tightly together to make sure that there's a maximum absorption of light so that the maximum rate of photosynthesis occurs within this layer we must know the role of the palisades mesophyll. of field right so you could speak about the function of the cells themselves what is the function of the layer increase the surface area right it is tightly packed together to absorb maximum amount of light that enters through the cuticle you know so that type of thing all right why I'm stressing how this paper is like really soft is because I remember this coming on a CSET biology paper. Alright? That is why I'm saying that, alright? I think it's the only way this could be ever difficult to anybody here is because CSET was like probably two years ago. That's probably the only reason why it would have never really make much sense. Alright? But it should be fine. So you know the you have the palisade mesophyll. What's happening in the spongy mesophyll, right? They are sp more spaced out than the palisade mesophyll, right? But they still have chloroplasts. So they're there to catch any other residual sunlight that was not completely caught, right, from the palisade mesophyll. And they're spaced out in such a way to allow for air spaces to, to emerge. And these air spaces are there for gases exchange. Lovely, right? Module 1 is really, really easy. This now, this could have been done by a C6 student as well. So let's have a look at this now. The figure 2 shows an electron micrograph of a chloroplast specifically and you're supposed to construct a diagram of a chloroplast right um of the chloroplast here okay so we're supposed to construct the diagram here okay that should be fine so you guys know how to draw a chloroplast i can't technically draw on the screen but you guys should know how to draw the chloroplast you need to show your um your yeah, your general chloroplast membrane, right? The chloroplast is a double membrane structure, so you need to draw both membranes. You need to draw your thylakoids arranged in grana, and each granum is connected to another granum by a thylakoid laminae, right? And then you're gonna have the stroma. So you need to just construct that diagram there. Alright. For figure 3 now, show the involvement of photosystem 1 and 2 in the movement of electrons during non-cyclic photophosphorylation. You must insert arrows to show the movement of electrons, right? Right? Your, mo your must clearly, you must clearly identify <laughs> photosystem 1 and 2 and show the photolysis of water as well as its production, as the production of reduced NADP and a b atp right so let me just zoom in on this page a little bit more let's look at this now all right so like this is ps2 ps1 or we could just say um ps700 and ps680 all right sorry ps680 and ps700 all right so i have that there and then what now the electrons will move going there, right? 
electrons right water will split there by the photolysis here h2o which would produce photolysis of water auto ionization of water same thing hydrogen ions uh, oxygen and stuff like that. lovely right if you want to balance it out so oxygen can be one molecule you can do that right but one water molecule will give you half an oxygen molecule etc right then we have this here and then we're gonna have um n a sorry n a d p well n a d p gonna become n a d p h so n a d p to produce so n a d p n a d p h and I guess since we don't have any ATP synthase, I would just put AT, ADP rather. ADP plus the PI, which is inorganic phosphate. And then that would give us ATP over here. This is lovely. And this is the reductase. NADP reductase. Alright. Lovely. This is a rather simple paper. Go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Um for the for the ps2 i did with the little arrow um where the 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 the, the carrier mm -hmm. that the arrow there right there so there so the the atp is made not necessarily let's look at this no i know what you're saying i know most definitely what you're saying i never saw the arrow but you're gonna have hydrogen right so let's put the ATP there then, since it's not showing the cytochrome. So they're gonna show it, what you're supposed to be showing is this basically. Right? That's supposed to be shown there. Your ADP plus your negative phosphate will give you your ATP. Right? The thing is, no. That's where you get hydrogen ions, but I guess that's where you wanna show your, your chemiosmosis. So that's where you would put it then. I never saw the arrow. Alright? But that's where you put it. So the ADP plus your inorganic phosphate and it would be your adenosine triphosphate. Alright. That should be fine then. Thank you for pointing it out though. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Describe the process of nutrient cycling in an ecosystem. I'm okay. sorry. Oh. Tip is getting a wet just like one way, please. Oh go back up. Oh. So this question? Yes. Mm. Yeah, you can move on now. Okay, let me just move down. Alright, so we're asked to describe this process of why is this going back up here? That is not what you're meant to do. Describe the process of nutrient cycling in an ecosystem. Go ahead. Anyone? Describe the process of nutrient cycling in an ecosystem. Nobody can answer this? Go ahead. So I can give it, I can give it a try. Um, I'll say that Newton cycling is the process by which um, compost well producers they would take like nutrients from the soil and they would probably take like for example nitrogen from the air. Um, they would use it, and then like when they die, bacteria in the soil they would break them down nutrients would then get 
recycled from there by nitrogen fixing bacteria mm. convert back to nitrogen mm. Mm. <laughs> question never said something about nitrogen cycle so you see when you start talking about nitrogen no marks because nitrogen is you see, if you said for example nitrogen cycle and then you describe the entire the cycle that's this is still two marks here right so you still wouldn't have to do that but you see you know because nitrogen cycle is the only nutrient cycling we see in module in in unit two overall it made sense why you spoke about the nitrogen cycle specifically right so you could say for example the nitrogen cycle and then talk about it that would be a lovely response right but overall as you were saying because i'm taking it from what you were saying right as you were saying right the producers produce some amount of nutrient will take up inorganic nutrients from the soil right use it to create different things right or large organic um nutrients right as the organic nutrients flow through the different trophic levels right and death occurs right then the detritivores and decomposers will break down these large organic nutrients back into um small inorganic substituents and those will now be reused by other producers so just explain how it's cyclic just describe how it's cyclic two marks right describe the cyclic nature of it right producers use nutrients goes through trophic levels death occurs um decompose this decomposition happens right and those same nutrients are used back by the producers just speak about the cycling all right that should be fine energy transfers in an ecosystem is inefficient right figure four shows the food chain of a marine ecosystem explain the relationship between the biomass of the organisms at each trophic level and the transfer of energy in the marine ecosystem you must present your response in complete paragraphs so I, I I thought that they were going to bring no pyramids of biomass and pyramids of energy, but okay. So I must describe them. Explain the relationship between pyramids of between biomass of organisms at each trophic level and the transfer of energy within the marine ecosystems, right? Via these, so the producer, then the primary consumer, the zoo, the zoo, the zooplankton, right? And then we have the small fish and large fish. So producer, you need to know who is your producer, who is your primary and secondary consumer, right? Who is your predatory tertiary consumer? And just describe how energy and biomass relates to all of them. All right. So who would I like to go? So the producer itself, you know how energy occurs. Producer obs absorbs um, the maximum amount of energy that is entering within the ecosystem that it can absorb, right? Go ahead. Um, sir, so I start by saying what the producers mm -hmm. are, which they are the organisms that ca capture and convert energy from the non-living source to organic matter through photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the phytoplankton is a producer and they utilize the energy from the sunlight and the nutrients to make carbohydrates and some other organic compounds. So, um, well, algae, I think I'd, I'd consider algae one of them too. Yeah, so I'll, yeah, algae and the phytoplankton, they have rich energy supply and so only 10% of the energy is passed to the primary consumer, which is the zooplankton. All right, so moving on to this then, go ahead. The next person just continue with the next part. Sir, sure, I have a question. Um, aren't like algae and phytoplankton smaller in size? might um biomass than the other organisms in the food chain in this which, well yeah mm -hmm. so then how would i relate that then because generally i would say that um your biomass 
I'll use one. But how would I relate that to the sub? Because I think this would form, if we're looking at it from a pyramid basis, which we really do, but that's how I'm putting it, it would form an inverted pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you would. So what? So what's the relationship then? Is the relationship is that um, as energy transfer go along the food chain, I want to first identify the relationship, and then the same can explain for each of the producers and stuff. Okay, so you know energy goes throughout the trophic levels, right? Don't know that. Yes. Right? For the biomass, no biomass typically creates a regular pyramid, right? Because even though the phytoplankton and the algae may be small, right, there are trillions upon trillions of them compared to the large fish population. So usually the population of the producers far outweighs any consumer within the ecosystem, right? So usually, take into consideration that within a marine ecosystem, right, we would, some persons would interpret that as being the largest biomass and then phytoplankton, then small fish, then large fish, right? So it would actually be smaller going up. But if you're looking at the individual organism, then it will form an inverted pyramid. Because if you look at a marine ecosystem, there are... Okay, so I'm not Probably sure this makes sense, right? If you try to measure the mass of all the phytoplankton and all the algae together, because that's what's being displayed here, right? Within an ecosystem, right? It's going to be a considerable amount. Even though the, each individual is small, right? It's going to be a considerable amount of mass, right? Compared to the amount of large fish. You get what I'm saying? But what we could look at, right? So you could look at it from that perspective to answer the biomass component, right? So usually, right, it tend, pyramids of biomass, right, tend to be regular pyramids, right? um in this case now mm -mm, in a marine ecosystem what would we say for this now mm -mm, i'm trying to think about in the case of a marine ecosystem whether or not we could use inverted pyramids uh, usually it's a regular pyramid mm -hmm. i'd have to say about that mm -hmm. Inverted pyramid argument makes sense. Alright, but usually biomass pyramids tend to be regular pyramids. Alright, so speak about the biomass increasing a little. Because as the energy amount decreases now, there can be less biomass at each trophic level. So you can explain it through that way. Because pyramids of biomass and pyramids of energy are connected together. So all of these speak about the decreasing amount of energy going up, right, and how the decreasing amount of energy would affect, affect how much biomass can be maintained at those different trophic levels. Just so speak about those two things as you go up through the different levels and you should be fine. This paper really went all out with this ecology stuff. I mean, it's mostly food system, like food chains and predation. Right? That's the module one here. Yeah. 